From the goblin shark to the vampire squid, here are your top 10 bizarre deep sea creatures that came from a parallel universe. In our number 10 spot today, we have the angler fish. In case you're thinking, hey, this fish looks familiar. Well, that's probably because this is the fish from Finding Nemo that almost ate Marlin and Dory after Dory sang her infamous ballad, Just Keep Swimming. Gosh, now that I've been reminded of it, you better believe that I'm gonna be singing it all night long. This aquatic fish can be found in some of the darkest spots of the ocean. The angler fish has an organ attached to the front of its head. Yes, that's right, an organ. This organ is called an esca. The esca is able to emit light due to a special form of bacteria called bioluminescence. The esca organ is actually the reason that the anglerfish is able to live in the ocean about 3,300 feet, which is 583 feet more than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. There is supposed to be over 200 species of the anglerfish. That's 200 too many if you ask me. Next up in our number nine species, Spot today we have the goblin shark. Named because it looks just like the mythical creatures and perhaps just like the HP Gringotts bank employees but in fish form, the goblin shark has been swimming in the deepest parts of the sea for over a hundred million years, most known to be found near Japan. The goblin shark has a long snout, which is a kind of antenna, which makes it capable of sensing the minute electric fields being sent out by prey nearby. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh up to 460 pounds. Wow. Their fang-like teeth allows them to snap up their prey and devour it. At this point, scientists don't know too much about their behavior. However, they have concluded that they live a pretty solitary life. Next up in our number eight spot, we have the harp sponge, also known as the Chondrocladia lyra. I have to say, this sea creature is actually so satisfying to look at for some reason. Anyone else get me? It literally looks like a harp, which makes it so hard to believe that it is a living creature. This sponge-like creature is actually known for its carnivorous appetite. It actually has Velcro-like hooks on the external part of its body, and they trap copepods and other small crustaceans. They then break down its prey until it's able to be absorbed through its pores. So it sucks you in with its Velcro-like body parts and proceeds to eat you. In our seventh spot today, we have the vampire squid. Yes, a real underwater vampire. Despite its name, the vampire squid is actually neither a squid nor an octopus. Scientists have separated it into its own group, even though it is quite similar with eight arms and two tentacles. The vampire squid can grow to around 12 inches in length. Its body varies from completely jet black to red. Its name comes from its dark color, and its skin kind of resembles a cape as its skin is connected to its arms. Fun fact, if one of its arms were to be removed by, say, a predator, then it can regenerate and grow back. That's pretty cool. Coming up in our sixth spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Okay, not going to lie, this fish looks like it's from another planet, let alone a parallel universe. It basically looks like it had a run in with the company that makes those glow in the dark bracelets. And my inner 90s baby is super happy to see this. Do kids these days still use glow in the dark bracelets? Please let me know in the comment section below. The barrel eye fish is a deep sea fish, also known as a spook fish, and it got its name because it has barrel shaped eyes with green lenses. They are known to have large fins and they're also known to have a transparent head that fills with fluid. Before 2009, scientists actually believed that they could only look up, but they have since observed that the fish can rotate its eyes forward when it's eating. That's pretty cool. The barrel eye fish is usually seen looking like it's lying down motionless. According to researchers, their transparent heads and green pigmented eyes help in filtering out the sunlight reaching their deep sea habitat. They have also been found to be in the North Pacific waters and near Baja, California and Japan. In our fifth spot today, we have the flapjack octopus. Gosh, why is it named this? Now I'm going to have to eat pancakes after this video. As delicious as its name sounds, its look instantly makes you say, better not. In fact, it looks more like a cute Pokemon, if anything, so I'm going to choose to believe that it's really a creature from my universe where Pokemon really exist and it somehow got into our universe through some underwater portal. The flapjack octopus is a part of the umbrella octopus family known for their umbrella-like appearance during any kind of movement. It lives between 500 to 1,500 meters below the sea. They are mostly found in the eastern Pacific Ocean with some
some sightings in the mid Atlantic Ocean. They don't have a long lifespan, usually living for 1.5 to 2.5 years. The flapjack octopus eats prawns, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, crabs, to name a few. When it's ready to hunt, it flattens out its body in order to appear less threatening. The flapjack is another creature found in Finding Nemo, one of Nemo's, you know, class friends named Pearl. In our fourth spot today, we have the Dumbo octopus. As you can probably guess, its nickname came from the fact that its ears are as cute as the famous Disney character Dumbo. The Dumbo octopus, like the flapjack, is another umbrella octopus, and it can live down to the depths of 13,100 feet, and some scientists speculate even deeper. They are inkless, unlike a lot of their cousins, and they move by slowly flapping their ears, and they use their arms to steer. Fun fact about female Dumbo octopuses, they can actually store sperm for long periods of time after mating with a male. This is to their advantage, of course, because they can then transfer sperm to the most developed eggs when it is the right time for reproducing. No comment, <laughs> but that sounds great. <laughs> they eat pelagic invertebrates that swim above the seafloor, and as such, they spend much of their lives suspended above the seafloor. In our third spot today, we have gulper eels. The gulper eel is quite terrifying to look at, and it is definitely the kind of fish that makes me slightly terrified to go swimming in the ocean. But I don't have to worry because they are in the deep sea. I only have to worry about, you know, sharks, stingrays, and stepping on a jellyfish. The gulper eel has a very distinctive trait. It has a very large mouth, and it tends to snap at its prey, similar to a snake. Its large mouth and its ability to open wide allows it to eat creatures you would otherwise assume would be too big for it to eat. It has a very skinny body, long and snake-like. They are about two to three feet in length and they live in the deep, deep sea ranging from 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet below the surface. Known to be the fish of your nightmares and of course I don't disagree with this. In our second spot today we have the pelican flounder. This fish is actually found in the western Pacific and Indian oceans. The pelican flounder makes itself as flat as possible to counter the pressure levels of the deep sea. Scientists haven't been able to observe this fish much in its natural habitat and so therefore nothing much is known. But we do know that the pelican larva, however, looks like it is from another dimension and it has a very alien-like sort of appearance. The larva are transparent and become brown as they grow into their adult form. They grow to be about 38 centimeters in length. Save the best till last. In our first spot today, we have the blob fish. Most people say that this is the ugliest fish in the world, but personally, I think the goblin shark is worse. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which fish is uglier? The blob fish, the goblin shark, or let's throw in the angler fish too, because that's another gross one. The blob fish has been described to look like a half melted human reduced to nothing more than a bubble. That is the perfect description of it. It also kind of reminds me of slime, but living. This fish can be found living in the deep sea of the coast of Australia and New Zealand. It is said to be residing in about 2,000 and 3,900 feet deep. Apparently the only reason it looks like the way that it does is because of depressurization damage done while bringing the animal to the surface. It looks like a fairly normal fish though at the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish has an extremely long lifespan of 130 years. It weighs about 20 pounds and it's about 12 inches long. They have no teeth, no skeleton, and they don't spend much energy moving around. So basically their name is quite fitting. Well that's all I have for you today folks. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melissa Milotti and see you next time. Good day.